great. Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, the meeting of uh, the pre-meeting of Narberth Borough Council. Uh, this video stream is uh, being live streamed on YouTube and Facebook. Um, we're going to have some uh, Q&A uh, in consideration of all of your interest for the Planning Commission. And the format will be uh, about 10 minutes per candidate. Um, I'll give you up to two minutes to uh, just sort of make an opening statement or speak about yourselves and your interest. Um, all of the council members have seen your letters of interest. So if you, uh, if you included something there previously, you can assume that we, we heard it, although you may wish to restate it for the public, it's up to you. Um, if you conclude a little early, we'll still use the time um, and we'll do question and answer between council members. And um, then if you have any questions um, and then we'll wrap up and move to the next candidate. Uh, just to sort of facilitate this, this is a public meeting, so there's nothing private about it, but what we'll do is move um, the applicants who are not speaking into the waiting room. Of course, you could always go look on Facebook and see how the other applicant is answering, but I would ask that, you know, let's keep a level playing field here and, um, and we'll get through this and then council will be making a decision later this evening. So you should hear for, uh, some uh, feedback from the office tomorrow if you're not watching the meeting. Okay. Um, with Mr. that, Mr. Matt, go ahead. Um, I, I see that, um, Jen, I see you have two uh, logged in here. I see, I, I, I let you in oh. on the iPhone and I see the other one. Is, is the iPhone your preferred? Yes. Okay. So I tried logging in on um, my PC, but yep. I, I was having trouble with my phone. <laughs> Ready. So I believe we'll go with um, Jennifer's up first. So I'm going to move the other three into the waiting room. And uh, hang on a minute. And the other. Okay. We are good to go. Hi. Okay. Um. Hi, Jen. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, I just want to say my interest really comes from uh, loving Lar Narberth. Um, we've lived here for my family and I, my husband and my son. Ha we've lived here for three years and um, it just is such a thriving community and the opportunity to, to contribute to its future would be, you know, an honor for me. I have a history of public service with the Peace Corps and Habitat for Humanity and uh, um, and I look forward to um, continuing along the line of public service. I also have experience with historic preservation and lead in my practice as an architect. And I think that that could be very useful to the commission uh, as they go forward with their form-based code, integrating more green and more uh, historic preservation uh ideas into the framework all right thank you council members do you have any questions go ahead mr mcgreevy okay uh thank you jen uh could you just expand on your uh green mindedness your yes in <laughs> fact uh i was a participant in the narber shade tree planting uh, festivities as long as they were going. <laughs> um, and um, as far as greenedness goes, uh, you know, I it's not only my professional mindset, it's also my personal mindset. We live green mindedness every day. Um, Narberth is definitely well positioned to take the lead on many aspects of forward thinking green um ideas including clean energy including you know having the train station at the center of the town um you know recon reconfiguring parking perhaps i mean all these things are just sort of like you know out there and um you know even going back to my public service in the peace corps i'm please share this with you actually rob um I planted 3,000 trees in Africa. I was the second group of Peace Corps volunteers admitted to the newly formed environment sector. And it was like 
a totally, you know, design your own program deal for two years. And um, I came up with the program at three schools. We had a competition. We got the forestry commission involved. We got all of our educators involved, agriculture science professionals and teachers. And it was just two years of a learning experience for everybody. And, um, and so, you know, since then that was 2001. <laughs> so, you know, since then it's always been a part of me and I never, you know, forget, um, I guess you'd say where I come from <laughs> in that regard. Thank you. Mr. Bush, then sure. Ms. Rickards. Um, so you. have you um, attended or watched any Narberth Planning Commission meetings? Yes. Uh, in fact, I was there in person for a while up in, until um, it would be December of okay. 2019, I guess. Um, I did not attend any of the virtual, but I did actually... Um, I watched some of the recorded ones, but I okay. wasn't like and attending live. So but can yes, you I have. Okay. To follow up on that, can you think of an issue uh, in a recent meeting that you would have spoken up about uh, if you were serving on the planning commission? Um, I would speak up for preservation. Um, you know, as the frontier of the city continues to expand and as the, you know, historic fabric of the main line continues to stay in place, I think we will continue to see the overlapping of the idea of the city and the idea of more suburban uh, architecture um, confronting each other in, in terms of, you know, what should we keep and what is considered, you know, more progressive or even modern. So um, I definitely would speak up for preservation as much as I would speak up for, you know, green building, clean energy, environmental mindedness. And I think that those two go hand in hand. I don't think it's an either or uh, situation there. I think that it is a, a both and. Thank you. Cindy. Sure. Um, hi, Jennifer. Can you ask, what are your thoughts about that? I'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the current construction projects going on in the downtown area. Mm. Yeah, um, very interesting. I don't know how much time I have to answer the, your question um, in full. I think I have a couple minutes, um, but I would say that I think it's really important to maintain the um, scale of Narberth, which is, um, you know, a little bit, uh, I think it, it looks to me like it's growing, um, you know, keep parking, uh, don't make parking thing on the list of things to, to deal with. Think about skate first, because I really think that what makes Narber as special as it is, is that it is walkable, is that the town center does have everything that one needs and expanding apartments and retail at the first floor and this mixed use thinking is a very urban concept. And to bring that to this sort of, you know, Main Street town, I think is, uh, um, you know, again, you're looking at sort of a mesh of ideas, not that we need to maintain some kind of purity uh, one over the other. Again, I think the two can work hand in hand, but I think above all, it is important to maintain the um, community scale of the town, of the borough. Thank you. I would land more detail. <laughs> 
Do we have any time? other council members with questions? Councilor El Um, So I have a question in all of your years of work experience, what is one lesson that you've learned that you think would be really applicable to taking to the planning commission? You know, I think actually I have to answer that as um, as a woman <laughs> and say that never underestimate the value of opportunity because all you need is to be given the opportunity to prove yourself to yourself so that you can share your ideas with others. And in architecture, I think it's really hard for a lot of men and women, you know, grad, you know, recent graduates and experienced professionals to um, get their voice heard. And, um, and I can say that, you know, the, the job I have right now is one where I'm really grateful for the opportunity the firm I'm working with. It's been an amazing um, experience, learning experience, and you know, to have people look to you with you know confidence that you can do the job. I think is really, um, I don't know if it's a lesson, but it's definitely a value that I love to share. Thank you, Aaron. I just have a brief comment. I just I want to Jen. I just wanted to thank you so much for your interest in serving on the planning commission once again. I'm aware of the fact that you put that you knocked on this door that you submitted your name in the past for um, this position, and at that time, I believe uh, Mr. Bressy wanted to be reappointed. So and we, and we had decided to limit the number of planning commission members to seven. I mean to five. So there wasn't a space for you at that time. And I, I just wanted to acknowledge that your that your interest has been sustained over several years. And thank you again for, for making yourself available. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That's our that's our time. So uh, have a nice evening and uh, we will uh, we will be rejoining later. Mr. West, thank could you. you let the next candidate in the room? Bye bye. Thank you. Ms. Gelman, hello. Hi. Hi, there you are, You're live and uh, we can hear you. Um, if you'd like to tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your application. Okay, um, I recently retired from Amtrak. I worked there for 22 years. And quite honestly, if it wasn't for the pandemic, I'd still be working there. <laughs> um, it was a voluntary retirement, but um, you know, it was too good an offer to refuse. Uh, um, and they, you know, the Amtrak and all the transportation entities are suffering. So it was clear that they have to cut back their, their staff. So um, I retired and um, I'm looking for challenges. And I think the um, planning commission would be a challenge. Um, I've got a, a, a background in public policy, and since getting that um, degree, I've worked in a lot of uh, both public, private, nonprofit um, settings. I have a lot of experience working with um, elected officials of, and cross-functional teams. Um, my expertise, obviously, is transportation, um, and I'd be interested in a lot of the circulation issues that, that the planning commission gets involved in, um, pedestrian, bicycles, working with transit, uh, working with Amtrak. Um, but I know that the, the commission does a lot more. Um, and um, I'm interested in, in the work that you have to do to, to evaluate development um, proposals and um, I know what's happening right now with some of those proposals so um, I'd like to I'd like to be a part of it thank you council members questions all right I'll ask a question if no one's oh Cindy go ahead 
Your turn. You're pointing at someone. I was pointing. Off the record. <laughs> go ahead. You go, Aaron. I'll go after you. Sure. Um, have you uh, attended any of the planning commission meetings or uh, watched them recently? Um, not recently. Uh, I have. Uh, I was looking into other um, other uh, uh, commissions or boards. Uh, I listened into the recreation board recently. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question. Oh, uh, after you, after you, Mona. Hi. Hi, Karen. Um, so out of all of your years of work experience, I'm wondering what's one important lesson that you've learned that you would want to bring to your work on the planning commission? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Um, well, I guess um, collaboration. I mean, working, listening and and hearing other opinions and working with others um, and asking a lot of questions if you don't understand something. <laughs> um, I don't, you know, claim to be an expert in um, a lot of the issues that you deal with. So I think I'd, I'd be asking a lot of questions and, and listening. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Rickards. Karen, um, can you please share your thoughts on the current construction project going in on the downtown area? Um, in particular, the ones on the development projects on Haverford. Yeah, in 5A, is, can you share your thoughts on some of those projects? Um, well, I think, um, I think it's good for the for Narberth. I think we need to have some development. I know that there there are people who are concerned about the height of buildings, um, but um, you know, and how big they are, and whether they'll dwarf the rest of the um, downtown look. But um, I've seen the I've seen the plans, and I, I think that they're. I think that they um, blend well with the downtown, and um, I, I think that it's 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 important that we that we grow as a community. Um, so I think as long as they're within our um, our zoning rules, I, I think they look good, actually. Mr. Bush. So if, sure. Um, if you were part of the planning commission and you were tasked to look at our transportation policy here in Narber, um, what are some areas you would look at or you would suggest the borough, um, you know, might want to change its focus? Um, I think we're a great pedestrian friendly community. No question about that. I walk all, all over the borough because I have a dog. Um, and sometimes, and even within my little neighborhood, I feel like um, a lot of uh, places could be cutting back their their bushes and greenery because there's not enough room on the sidewalk to have more than one person walking through it. So that's one area. Um, I'd like to see a bicycle uh, network in the in the township. I mean, in the borough. Sorry. Um, and um, you know anything we can do to once once this pandemic ends and people are actually willing to get back onto trains um, to, to sort of work with SEPTA to um, to improve ridership for not just not just work but also for you know leisure activities. And, um, I think we've got a great. You know, we have a great network here, of a multimodal system that we um, we should continue to to promote. Thank you. Any other questions? I Mr. have a Westwood. question. Hi, hi, Karen. Thanks so much for making yourself available um, for to serve on the planning commission. 
I have a question for you about conditional, conditional use eligible properties. In, in 2016, when the, when the council passed um, the new form-based code, several properties in the 4A general district, they were um, particularly the beautiful, um, historically important um, Victorian kind of houses were designated um, for as eligible for conditional use um, as a way to actually incentivize the owners to, to maintain them or to repair them rather than tear them down and, and uh, build something new. Do you think that was, a, do you think that we did enough to pr protect the important historical buildings in that district and elsewhere? And if, if, if not, what else would you suggest we do? Well, um, I know that, uh, that there is, I was looking at your, your, your meeting notice, your meeting minutes and, and reviewing that you've, that it has become an issue. For instance, right down my street, uh, I'm on far and at the end of that street, there's a, a home that's been demolished and everybody was concerned about the, you know, what's going to go up. Um, so, you know, and that's a case of how historical is that building? I think you have to, I don't know that you could, you would have to really take a, a, a good survey of what you want to make as a historic district. Um, I don't think you can, you know, just cover the whole borough as much as everybody would like it to stay the way it is, or a lot of people would like to, it to stay the way it is. So I think maybe doing a, a, a sort of um, comprehensive survey of, of all of our um, homes and buildings when they were built and maybe start with a period of time that you want to place that historic uh, district um, similar to what you talked about with that Victorian home. I don't know how old that was. How old was that home? Ooh, I can't okay. hear you. I think the cutoff date in the form-based code is anything built prior to 1928 becomes eligible. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you have done that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but they also have to be designated in particular on the in the in the code. So it's only specific homes, but the criteria was based on the lot size and the and the year. Thank you for so much for sharing your thinking with us. It was appreciated hearing you think Thank out you. loud. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gelman. Okay. All right, we'll bring in the next candidate. Thank you. Aaron, how much time do we have per candidate? 10 minutes total. 10 minutes, okay. And that's going to give us a little break before uh, the council meeting starts. Uh, Mr. Kinslow, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. The floor is yours. Um, I guess I'll give a quick, a quick story of, of who I am. So I was born and raised in Delaware County. Um, grew up with the St. Joe's, so we're all familiar how close that is to here. I, I had a brief stint for five years with my first job out of school, and then Love brought me to New York City, where uh, I started with my current company, which I'll get into in a minute. Spent three years in New York, uh, moved to Miami, and then when my wife and I wanted to start a family, home is is Pennsylvania, so we moved back here. Lived in Philadelphia for a bit, but uh, I've always loved the town of Narberth, and and always saw it as as a real goal for me to live here and, and raise my family in this town. So. About two years ago, a small house that was built in the 1950s, which needed a complete rehab, uh, went on the market and we saw it. And within five days of it going on the market, we put our offer in and our offer was accepted. Uh, so I've been an owner here for two years and I've been a resident here for one year. So think about what happened this past year. I'm not sure if you're aware of what's been going on in the news, of course. So I haven't been able to really fully take advantage of everything Narberth had to offer in, in terms of festivals and things like that, although I have been there in the past, but uh, I've become completely obsessed with this town. I have two young children, a three-year-old and a nine-month-old, and take today, for example. Um, I started my day at seven in the morning with a workout class at Patrician, which I know Sabine is a hot topic here, um, so I started my day there, got a coffee at Get, and 
even did a quick, very, very chilly walk with my, uh, my three-year-old son around the block, just saying hi to our neighbors. So I completely love this town. Um, my, my intention is I love what this town is. So I want to be a part of, of keeping what's great about it. Great. I also am, uh, on the younger side. So I want to make sure I'm helping usher in what this town has the potential to be. Um, now to my experience and why I think I'm relevant for this, this position. I, I spent the last seven years in the commercial real estate industry. Uh, I cover about nine different markets across the United States. I've spent a lot of time in the Southeast, but I understand development. I understand how development works, how development thinks. I also understand community development. I understand the impact the community has. Uh, and that's what I'm looking to do here. I, I understand where the, the industry is heading in terms of master plan communities. I think there's a place for master plan communities, things like, uh, you're probably familiar with the Granite Rum Mall, what that, what that was and what that currently is. That, that has been done really well across the country. I can point to Avalon in Atlanta. That's a phenomenal project. If I wanted to live in a place like that, however, I would have moved to a place like that. I don't think Narberth uh, should be that anytime soon, but I am aware of the overall trends that are happening in the market. So. I think I can bring a bit of a different perspective to this this group and this community, and and that's what I've uh, that's what I've prepared. That's that's why I hope you consider me for for this position. I'd love to join you all. Council members, questions? I apologize for my dog. Councilor El Shax, I'm calling you first. Thanks. Hi, Brian. Um, what is the most important lesson you've learned in your years of work experience that? you think would be really helpful to bring to your work on the planning commission? Yeah, so there's there's a few things. Uh, most of my time and my current position has been in the, in the sales and uh, management world. So I, I understand the importance of teamwork and understanding. Uh, I've been put into uncomfortable situations before when I started with my company. I'd, I'd never been to Atlanta. I'd never been to commercial real estate. My training was a plane ticket. And a book on real estate, and uh, I turned. I, I was able to triple that market story. Um, so I think teamwork, uh, but I also I, I again want to hark back to um, the understanding that community is is what makes things great. It's what makes things passionate, and I've been able to be a part of different organizations and committees in the past, um, both professionally and and personally. And uh, I think I can bring those items to this uh, this committee. Hopefully. Thank you, Mr. Bush. Sure. So first, let me say I appreciated your, you know, your your, your walk through Narberth uh, in the morning. Um, uh, have you attended or watched any uh, Narberth Planning Commission meetings? Uh, I've watched a few. This is weird. You're all a bit uh, celebrities in my in my house. Um, um, I've watched a few. I having two kids usually they're they're right around dinner time, so I, I generally have it on in the background. But I have watched a few. I can't say that I've taken painstaking notes. But sure. I'm enough with some of the things that are happening. Can you think of a, an issue that came up in a, in a recent planning commission meeting that you would have spoken up about had you been serving on the commission? The Sabine Park is the one that really sticks out to me. I'm, I'm, um, I'm by Marion Elementary where my house is, so I'm not, I'm not quite right around the corner. From, I'm, that's not like directly impacting my, my day to day, but I can sympathize. I do have friends that live there, so I can sympathize with, with what they could potentially want to see out of that project. As well as, I mean, I had a conversation today with the owner of, uh, of the, the gym there uh, and what, what he would want, as well as understanding how the, the dynamic may play with the township and the borough and, and our needs um, to, to be able to bring in sustained revenue. So um, that would be something that I, I think I would be able to chime in about and speak out about. Councilor Rickards. Sure. Hi, Brian. How are you? Can you please share your thoughts um, on one of the current construction projects in the 5A district? Uh, to, to give you an answer right now, it would be, it would be insincere of me making it up on the fly. I don't have prepared thoughts on a construction project, I'm sorry. Um, I will say that if, if you, you accept me onto this board, I would do. Uh, countless number of hours of research that I could be able to give a, a more thoughtful response. So I apologize for not directly being able to answer your, your question. Sure. Thank you. Um, Mr. Weisbord or Mr. McGreevy. Uh, thank you, Brian. I, I'm, I'm curious about your background and if you could um, imagine in planning commission working, I, I don't know, it, working uh, on the Sabine project, like drawing on your insight uh, as a, as both someone who works in commercial real estate and someone who loves Narberth, 
can you imagine some sort of happy uh, middle ground? Uh, ab absolutely. I mean, that's a that's a phenomenal parcel of, of land right there. Uh, the, the, that if it stays the way it is, that could be reformatted to be a real community builder. It has a lot of positive impact on what Narberth is, right? I think there's only a handful of, of places where, where the public can gather. That's one of them, right? Um, being, being somebody who frequents parks. But I, I think there's absolutely a happy medium, whether it stays uh, a borough property or is uh, given to a developer to, to do some phenomenal things with. But, uh, you know, a, a lot of developers are, are given a, a tag that can sometimes be untrue. That they're, they're sometimes seen as these evil people that are greedy. There are a lot of phenomenal developers out there that can really do wonderful things for the community uh, as well as you know, make a profit on the, on the back of that. Hey, Brian, um, uh, thanks so much for making yourself available to the Planning Commission. Um, just curious if if there's, if you are not point, appointed to Planning Commission, are there any other boards or commissions you'd, you'd really like to serve on? Yeah, I, so I, I really want to be involved with the town of Narberth, with the, with the borough of Narberth, uh, but I would, I, I, I would like to be a part of the borough of Narberth. Of Narberth. Um, I've, I've very quickly become a part of the small street I'm on here, and I really want that to expand out further. So if you think there's a better position for me, I'm certainly open to it. However, I would, I would love to be considered. For I don't know. It seems you could probably play a lot of different uh, positions on the field, but, but thanks so much for, for uh, it's good to meet you tonight. Thank you. Any other questions, council members? All right. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Kinsla. Just want to say you'll get somebody who's going to be incredibly enthusiastic. Uh, I really hope you consider me for this. And hey, I really thank you. If nothing else, looks like you're all smiling. So I appreciate your time. <laughs> thank thank you, you, sir. Good evening. All right, Mr. West. All right, Mr. Crom, welcome. Hi, how are you? Good, good, thank you. Um, go ahead, the floor is yours. Okay, two minutes. Um, well, my name is Adam Crom. I'm a resident of the borough. I live on Elmwood Avenue at 109. And um, as background, my family, we moved here in 2011 from Philadelphia. At the time, our daughter was just born and our son was three years old. And they're now in fifth grade and eighth grade. And we were attracted to Narberth by the ability to walk everywhere and have our children be able to walk to school and their friends' houses and shopping and even the doctor's office. Um, we've bought a lot of birthday presents from character development over the years. And of course, we're regulars at the bakery, the movie theater, and the local shops and restaurants. Um, when we moved from Philadelphia at first, we didn't have a car for a few years. So we did a lot of our shopping really close by. And our children were in the youth sports leagues like Little League and soccer. And uh, the library was a, a favorite uh, place to go and so on before COVID. In terms of my professional background, I have a master's of city planning from the University of Pennsylvania, which is actually how I ended up living here. Um, I worked as a professional planner from 2002 until 2010 with a firm called WRT in Philadelphia and on many different projects for communities really all across the country, including Omaha, Nashville, Portsmouth, Annapolis, and then of course here locally in Philadelphia and New Jersey. I was at the time a certified planner um, with the American Institute of certified planners or AICP. I don't have that credential anymore um, because I am now a transportation planner. Um, I worked on zoning, planning, um, waterfront planning and urban design in particular. I was a lecturer at Penn and Drexel in city planning and urban design um, when my, until my kids uh, took more of my time than I could have left over for school. Um, and then I started working on transportation which is how I ended up at Amtrak. I joined Amtrak in 2010, just before I moved to Narberth. Um, I do studies and financial evaluations and data analysis. Um, and I run essentially our intermodal program of uh, 150 bus routes, carry about 100 or uh, 1.5 million riders during a normal year. And uh, basically do service planning and business analysis with Amtrak and some station planning. And then I work with state DOTs on various transportation initiatives. Um, and as disclosure, um, since we're talking about trains, uh, my spouse is a SEPTA employee, and so trains and buses are kind of in our family, and my kids have grown up 
you know, spending a lot of time uh, on the rails. So that's, that's, I guess, me in a nutshell. Great. Council members, any questions? Councilor El Shacks. Hi, Mr. Crom. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, my question, I guess, is out of your years of work experience, what is one of the most important lessons you've learned that you would probably bring with you to your work on the Planning Commission? Well, I think it's pretty important that you have a lot of stakeholder buy-in if you know, you're know you looking to make a change, for example. Um, one of the reasons why I joined Amtrak was that uh, I wanted to be part of the ability to implement things, not just the ability to plan things that didn't happen. Um, so it's, you know, it's always great to see um, a great plan realized, um, but it can be a little disheartening if, if nothing happens, right? Or if things go the opposite direction, right? And, and things don't go well. So, um, you know, I, we, some of my favorite projects, frankly, were the ones where you do community charrettes or community engagement, where it's not just, it's a lot of listening, right? But it's also, you pick up the pencil and you actually try to solve problems with the stakeholders. Mr. Bush. Thank you. Sure. Um, have you uh, attended or watched any uh, Narbor's Planning Commission meetings? Only, only like maybe one or two. Okay. I came to one, um, and I think that one had like forty people. Uh, you know, pre pre COVID, and uh, it must have been a fairly controversial. I think it was one of these things where it was like they're going to knock this down and put up that, and so everybody came. And the planning commission um, very, you know, gingerly explained that wasn't what was happening tonight, and kind of we had a, a you know, really good um, civic discussion about the the role of the planning commission and the status of things. So, a couple of meetings, but not not very many. Can you think of any um, issues that have been brought up recently um, in the planning commission meetings that you saw or in the borough that you would uh, speak up about? Were you on the planning commission? Well, I mean, I'm not, what do you mean by speak up about, I guess, is the question. No, you would have a strong opinion about that you think you, you know, you would have a contribution to make. Well, I, I hope that one of the contributions I can make is perhaps with regards to urban design and just, which is, I think, kind of making projects be as good as they can be and, you know, respond to the community's goals, the context and character of the community and, you know, as a practical way of really trying to solve problems. Um, and again, like have, you know, have a project be as, um, compatible with its site as possible or add as much value for the community as possible. Um, so I know there's been, you know, over the, the years, a lot of work on the form based zoning code. And then, you know, there are development proposals and some of those proposals are, um, you know, have are a little controversial, I guess. I have, I have a, a, a quick question that may be too complicated to answer quickly. Um, Adam, thanks for being here tonight. Um, I'm curious, since, since 20th century zoning was really about accommodating automobiles and you know, separating uses according to like dirty ones versus clean ones like residential, and the future is probably maybe not accommodating cars as much, but kind of creating healthier places for all of us to live. What do you like? What do you think's next? Like the next iteration of our zoning? If you could like um, be a little bit of a futurist, like we've just kind of created a form-based code to respond to the what was used to sort of be the car-centric code. Like, what's the next iteration going to look like? Well, I think one of the special things about Narber as a place is that it's so diverse in some ways in terms of land use, in particular, and urban design. Um, so. We're talking about zoning and the way things are changing, right? We're all working from home day after day. Um, that wasn't, you know, the, what a home-based work environment was like even 20 or 30 years ago, right? Even with telecommuting, right? So, I think that that, you know, that that whole notion of what, it, where do you work, um, is gonna is gonna be evolved, right? And so that there's a role there. It's not that people aren't gonna go into the office or into work anymore, but I think there's a blending of home. And um, third places like you know cafes and, and restaurants, places you meet, um, and then those traditional workplaces. So that's, I guess, one one change that's happening right now. Um, you know, and I think that 
I think that there's a real value. People understand that walkability is special, that it's, you know, it's something to cherish. And so, you know, making choices that support that. Thank you so much. Councilor Rickards. Sure. Um, hi, Adam. I suspect we probably have some mutual colleagues in Harris Steinberg and Alan Greenberger and in the urban planning space. Um, can I, can you please share your thoughts about the uh, current uh, construction project in 5A? No, I, I wouldn't be able to speak to specific uh, projects. I'd be happy to, you know, review plan sets or get up to speed on any particular proposals, but it, I don't feel that I'm, you know, at this time ready to speak to any particular development project. Projects. Okay, thank you. Other council members? Mr. McGreevy? Uh, thank, thank you, Adam. Um, can you speak to, uh, you know, looking looking to the future, can you speak to environmental concerns and, and how the Planning Commission might work on bike lanes, stormwater, anything that could fall within planning? Yeah, well, the, the, you know, uh, transportation and stormwater are, are great examples. You know, a third one might be energy. Um, so my, my children come home from school and they ask, where are the solar panels on our house, for example? So that I think that's going to be something that over the next few years, again, as a leading edge issue, um, as that technology gets cheaper, I think we're going to see, you know, more discussion about that. Um, it's, you know, stormwater, I think that um, we've been, I, just since I've lived here, I've been very pleased. I know it's not in the borough, but, you know, Short Ridge, the basically taking the banks of the stream and trying to create a buffer Right, and it's more ecological. It's better for the, the um, for the um, plant and animal communities to have that riparian area, um, and it also helps some with the stormwater, with both filtration and slowing the runoff. Um, and so, not only do those projects that you know have an environmental benefit, or um, but they actually have a, a human benefit because they make the park you know more attractive and more enjoyable. Um, for example. And then for bicycling, I think that that's, frankly, it's a major opportunity in this part of the county to increase cycling from what it is today. Um, you know, it's very safe and easy to cycle within the borough. Um, it's, it's a little more challenging, like, you know, my son for middle school, it's so close. You can ride a bike there in 10 minutes, um, but there are some safety issues with that, you know, for children. So um, I would love to see some progress on that. Thank you. Well, that's our time for this evening. I thank you very much for coming out and speaking with us. And um, Council, uh, I think we'll take a break for 15 minutes and we will rejoin in public session at 730. Uh, you can mute yourselves or you can head out and come back in whatever you like. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Adam. Adam. Night. Um, folks, just real quick before we go, if you can't open SharePoint, I asked Matt to email me the meeting packet and I completely forgot it's posted online. So I spent all that time trying to get SharePoint up and running and it's of course posted under um, meeting information. <laughs> oh, I thought you were looking at the at the letters and resumes. All right. I wanted that. I, I was looking because I wanted to pull up the candidates resumes, but then I panicked and thought I can't even get motions for tonight because everything's in SharePoint. Um, but okay, I'll see ya. All right, thanks. I think Ms. Pananopoulos is absent this evening. Okay, great. I call to order the February 17th, 2021 meeting of Narberth Borough Council. Uh, Mr. West, could you please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. President. Fred Bush. Here. Muna Elshax. Here. Rob McGreevy. Here. <laughs> Michelle Pananopoulos, absent. Cindy Rickards. Uh, here. Vice President Bob Weisbord. Here. Mayor Andrea Deutsch. Here. And Council President Aaron Miedrich. Present, thank you. Um, Mayor Deutsch, would you lead us in the pledge? My pleasure. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag 
flag of the United States, United of, America, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Interesting that Zoom does not reverse one's own image. Oh. Um, I have no comments, Ms. Mayor. Uh, briefly, um, kids are starting to go a little bit more in person to school, so just be mindful of driving around town. Um, please uh, keep your speeds to the speed limit and, and be very careful stopping at stop sign and observing our traffic laws. Enforcement will be strict and, uh, and we're gonna keep a lookout to make sure that our pedestrians, including our kids are safe. Uh, second, uh, we are expecting a get, yet again, another snowfall uh, overnight. Uh, a snow, emergen snow route emergency has been declared as of 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Please make sure to get off those snow routes. Uh, also, it is the law in Norbert that you have to have your sidewalk cleared within 24 hours of the end of, of snowfall or ice fall. So you have to have a path, the width of your sidewalk uh, that, is, that is accessible and free of ice and snow. So please make sure to do that. Be conscious of your and kind to your neighbors and pedestrians and let's do our, our part to keep everyone safe. Uh, and that is it. Thank you. All right, um, we'll go to public comment. This is the only opportunity during this public meeting for members of the public to uh, speak on any issue that they like. Um, if you uh, would like to speak up, just state your name and address. There's not so many people here, so I'll let you just go. And um, then we will get to the business uh, and deliberations of the evening. Hello, Aaron. Carol Marie. Hello, Aaron. Scanlon. It's Carol Marie Scanlon. Stay by now, Avenue. Yes. yes. So I have a question for you. Has Elizabeth Beckett resubmitted her report? Uh, we have nothing new from Elizabeth, Be Elizabeth Beckett. Okay, and um, have any parties contacted the borough with interest on the property? Is there any progress in the uh, in two hundred one? Anything going on there? I I don't have anything to report, and I don't think there's anything in this agenda to report. All righty, um, and is council? How is council looking to implement the twenty forty comprehensive plan, uh, recommending putting protection on the open space? Is that something that council is um, looking toward, moving toward, um, paying attention to in that's the a, plan? That's a more a more complex question, so I'll let you I'll let you comment on it. But I don't know that I can offer an answer this evening. All right, then that will conclude my uh, comment. We're just looking to see if there are um, uh, plans for open space protections for both the playgrounds. Thank you. Any other public comment? Hearing none, I will close public comment and we will move to 6A, Finance and Administration. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, I'm having... Um... SharePoint issues. Okay, I'm sorry, I have a motion for you. I move that Borough Council approve the minutes of the January 6, 2021 workshop meeting and January 2021 business meeting of Borough Council. Uh, is there a second? Seconded. Um, any discussion? As my phone explodes with tomorrow's mm -hmm. impending school cancellation. All right, all in favor? All right, the ayes have it. 6B, schedule of bills. I move the borough council approve the schedule of bills for the general highway, sewer and solid waste funds and authorize the borough manager to pay all bills. Second. All right, seconded. Any discussion, questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Okay, now we get to the part of the meeting where we uh, will move members of the public into the um, waiting room. Uh, and council will meet in a brief executive session um, to discuss uh, real estate matters and um, 
uh, potential litigation. And um, we will then rejoin into public session at the conclusion of that and continue our agenda with 6C. Okay, um, still waiting on two more people's audio. All right, all right. Um, can I get a 6C? Is there a motion? Um, I move that Borough Council adopt resolution 2021-001, approving tentative sketch subdivision and land development plan for a four lot subdivision of residential twin dwelling development at three Elmwood Avenue per the attachment that we all have in the uh, council packet. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Bush. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, hold on, if you could hold up your hands, that's for uh, all opposed. Aye. Uh, Councilor Rickards and Councilor L. Shacks in opposition. The vote is four to six, uh, the motion passes. Four to two. Four to two, sorry. 42, total six with Ms. Panelopoulos absent. Can I go to motion uh, 6D? President Muter? Scrolling through. Yes. Before we move on, I do see that Mr. Fromhold, uh, and Mr. Falcone, uh, and Mr. Yan are here on that. Uh, I just didn't know sure. if they wanted to make any statements on. Mr. Fromhold, did you uh, want to make a statement? I do. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. We, we appreciate all the time that you have uh, taken to consider the matter. And I know you had a lot of concerns and I hope you'll be very happy when we come back with the preliminary plan. Sure. No problem. I'm glad to offer you the opportunity to make a statement. Um, Mr. Fr and Mr. Frommel, you acknowledge that there are a number of conditions here that need to be required uh, to be met prior to submitting or submitting with that preliminary plan, including lots of uh, meetings that you need to have with both Narberth uh, committees, commissions, besides just the planning commission, uh, as well as Lower Marion? Uh, that, that's correct. Okay. And, you're gonna be, and you're gonna be looking into uh, issues related to the access onto Wynwood Road uh, and safety concerns that have been expressed to you in the past on that? Uh, we will. Uh, we appreciate all of the uh, concern that you've given to uh, the number of the issues here uh, all the time that uh, I see Mr. Bressy is uh, here at the meeting as well, all the time that he and other members of the Planning Commission had uh, given us as well as all of your consideration. We know that we have uh, uh, a number of meetings to go to, a number of people that we need to speak with uh, and uh, consult with as we uh, prepare the preliminary plan. And if and if as a result of those meetings, changes need to be made to the plan that as you've presented, uh, those are reasonable changes. Those are changes that, that you would have then reflected in that preliminary plan? When you say if there are changes uh, that would be made, we would certainly be uh, discussing the matter with borough, with planning commission, uh, with uh, members of council, um, we really have to wait and see what, what those are. But there are a number of uh, advisory bodies uh, that uh, we will be meeting with, uh, uh, the uh, uh, councils. Uh, we have uh, further discussion with uh, PennDOT. We've had preliminary discussion with them, as you know. So th th there, there's a lot of homework that we need to do in uh, uh, before we come back to you. And uh, we uh, realize uh, all of the conditions that. Well, COVID nineteen vaccine mix up could impact a hundred thousand. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So the, the 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 answer is yes. I I don't want to speak prematurely, not knowing. And we're uh, not what, trying to get you co to commit to anything uniquely, right, but, right, but again, right. I, yeah. One of the uh, things I just want to make sure that, that all parties are on the same page that if if there are better options that aren't reflected on this plan we would like to have those better options pursued uh, if it works for for everybody. Uh, understood. Thank you. Good. 
again, thank you. All right, let's move on to 6D. Okay, uh, I move that Borough Council adopt resolution 2021-002, approving an intergovernmental agreement with the city of Philadelphia, Westchester, the city of Pittsburgh, Lower Marion Township, Solbury Township, and other municipalities for the joint prosecution and common interest efforts related to potential litigation, related to state preemption of local single use plastic regulation. For the attachment. Is there a second? Cindy, second. any discussion? We've gone over this. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Nope, unanimous. 6E, Act 44. I move the Borough Council adopt resolution 2021-003, Act 44 procedure per the attachment. Second. Seconded by Mr. Bush. Any discussion? I know this was uh, discussed in the FNA meeting, Mr. Bush. Yeah, we just discussed this in FNA. This is relating to how our police pension fund might hire an advisor. Um, the state has recently changed the procedures for how we're supposed to go about that or the best practices for going about that. So this is bringing our, our, uh, our pension plan into sort of best practices for, for hiring an advisor, which they are currently considering doing. If I, if I might add, Mr. West. Yep, it's it's for both pensions, and um, this is a result of um, discussions with our ongoing pension audit that's currently underway. This was um, strongly recommended by our state appointed auditor um, that the borough council adopt these procedures that just gets us in line with um, best practices that they are looking for from a statewide auditing standpoint. So it would it would apply to both the um, non-uniform as well as police pension. All right, thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? All right. Any opposed? Unanimous. 6F. We have the Borough Council approve the time extension for the review of the tentative sketch plan for the project located at 230 Haverford Avenue. The extension of time is to include July 23rd, 2021, per the attachment. Is there a second? Seconded by uh, Mr. Bush. Any discussion? Mr. Solicitor, do you have anything to add? No, this is a plan that's been extended uh, a couple times in the past. Uh, I think it was submitted originally last December, uh, not this December, but the December before prior. Um, so this doesn't give any rights except for the ability for um, the applicant and the, the borough to uh, have further discussions to evaluate the plans um, through through July. All right, thank you. All right, all in favor? All right, any opposed? None, the plan is extended. Um, 6G, I know we did interviews earlier. Um, I might exercise some authority and to amend the agenda here and punt this to a, uh, a future month. I'm looking for feedback. I, I actually, um, I think that's a good idea given the fact that we have not yet received a resignation letter. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and just in anticipation of that, maybe we wait until we have that in hand. So I will reach out to Mr. Spear, who we discussed, uh, you know, how we had appointed to another full term and he had uh, graciously agreed to serve until such time that he would step aside. So let me get the paperwork in, in order and probably at the March meeting, uh, we'll be able to move forward with this. Councilor El Shacks. Um, if we push it to a later meeting, are you expecting that there are other applicants or? Uh, no, that would be a separate request from council if we wanted to reopen the application process and do additional interviews. I don't think, I think this is just um, paperwork wise. Let's oh. get the resignation in place before we uh, you know, appoint someone. Thank you. Okay. All right. So that's, that's what we will do there. Uh, Mr. West, could you make sure that the candidates are aware? Thank you so much. Moving to information items. Um, Mr. Solicitor, do you have a report? 
just to report that I'm still going to be working uh, over the next month or so on the stormwater uh, code overhaul. Um, that's something that is, again, a, a big overhaul to do. Uh, so that isn't something I forgot about. Uh, I have been working uh, with some of the committees or on some proposal changes to the dog barking ordinance and the shade tree commissions. I know those are works in process, process as well. Uh, other than that, uh, there are no real ordinances in the pipeline, which is, I guess, is a, a good thing. Um, and there have been some planned submissions uh, for uh, essentially twin houses, uh, two lot subdivisions, twin houses uh, throughout the borough uh, that are probably going to be making their way through uh, planning commission and eventually will be coming before council. Uh, I do have uh, the zoning hearing for um, the matter regarding the, uh, the driveway issue uh, that was put in without the permits uh, later this month. Um, so I'll be reporting back to council on how that goes, unless that is uh, continued or extended by the zoning hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Manager, do you have a report? Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to say that um, the financials have been um, added to the meeting packet, including the current cash balances and the budget versus actual. It's early on in the budget season, but it's always a good idea to just keep an eye on those things. Um, and I just wanted to bookend uh, the mayor's comments from the beginning of the meeting way back, it seems like forever ago now, just to reiterate that um, snow will be flying again tomorrow and just encourage residents to be aware of the current snow routes and please move your vehicles sooner. Um, I would just encourage everybody to do that act maybe tonight instead of waiting till tomorrow morning. It's supposed to start um, snowing early in the morning and um, it would just really help our plowing efforts. And um, the police will be out enforcing those zones as well, um, issuing tickets to those cars that haven't um, been moved. Thanks. Thank you. Um, any comments for the good of council? Aaron, I have a question about the engineer's report. Go ahead, That in the monthly reports? Um, I do, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Matt, I don't expect you to know this, but I'm wondering if it's a question that we can communicate to the um, Pannoni. I see that 198 Elmwood is not not listed on the engineer report, and I'm curious the state of the demolition permits um, with that property. I feel like we haven't had an update on the church property in some time. Okay, I don't believe that that would be under the borough engineer's report, as that would be a code enforcement building code official report, and that would be Kevin Walsh. Um, if you're looking for um, Pannoni as our project manager for the bridge project, I could give you a date <laughs> with that, right? We've got all these different things moving, going on. But um, the, currently, the, the, you know, associated with the bridge project, um, we do have one outstanding um, parcel right-of-way acquisition having to do with 198 Elmwood. Um, currently, the owners of 198 Elmwood are obtaining their own appraisal um, to compare it to the borough's appraisal um, for final negotiation. Um, I don't know what the status of the um, demolition permit is, and I can follow up with you and with um, Kevin Walsh tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, comments for the good of council. Give me some good news, Mr. Bush. Um, I'm not sure we've officially uh, wished the library a happy 100th birthday, which happened earlier this month. So congratulations to the Narberth Library. And, uh, Wonderful. 100 years. 100 years. It's a long time. It's a good go. It's a good go. Um, anything else? Anybody? All right. Any new business? Yes, Councilor L. Shacks. I don't know if this counts as new business or old business or both. So um, it's fine. I continue to be very concerned about future flooding in Narberth with climate change bringing um, more severe flooding and with new construction that seems to have, you know, put impervious surfaces on most of the property. And I think it would be important for. I'd like council to take up the idea of whether we should encourage the planning commission and the environmental advisory commission or both to work together because of our pollution reduction plan and our zoning codes um, to really reconsider putting um, 
smaller limit size, reducing the amount of allowed impervious size, um, impervious coverage on new construction in our borough. Okay, mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Bush. Um, well, I mean, on one hand, I, I, I attended um, the last EAC meeting and they are also very, uh, very interested in, in flooding and, and looking at what they can do to, to mitigate flooding. On the impervious, um, so what we're working on with the stormwater ordinance is to trigger um, a stormwater review at a, at a lower level of impervious um, coverage. And what that means is that you have to account for the impervious surface. You have to take care of all the stormwater coming off of that impervious surface. So it, it wouldn't necessarily say you can't put impervious surface out there, but it would say you need to address all of the stormwater um, and at least filter it and make sure it's you know not going on anybody's property. So it, it, it would have some effect. It, it, it's not the same as saying, let's limit impervious coverage, which is a, a different issue. But we are, we are, you know, the impetus for that was last year's floods. That's why, you know, we took this up in, in infrastructure. And I, but I also think from a form based zoning code perspective, when you look at some of the new construction, it does not seem to really fit into um, if the point with the form based zoning code is to make things fit into the size and feel of the community. I'm seeing new houses go up that don't seem to do that. So I think there's there's also there's multiple reasons as well. So I'm, I, I just think it's something that I think we need to revisit. So I wanted to put it out there, see how everyone else feels. Mona, can I ask you a clarifying question? Sure. So I think what you're actually saying is you're, what I hear you saying is you have concern for two things. One is stormwater. Yeah. But the other is green space. So the concern uh, is yes, stormwater, but it, 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 mitigating that doesn't solve your second concern of the loss of green space. Is that correct? Well, absolutely, because green okay. space is, is important for climate action as well. Then I'm, I'm, I understand that. I think we should also revisit that because it speaks to scale. Thank you for helping me clarify that. <clears throat> so that would be, that would be something um, individual council members definitely should feel comfortable reaching out to uh, EAC members, especially the EAC chair. Um, and when council looks at the, prior, the next step priorities for the planning commission, whether there's a desire to further reduce the sort of size and form of uh, properties or the percentage of development that can happen on lots. Those are sort of the form-based code changes which could happen and that would be the, the processes. We would direct the planning commission to tackle that as, as, their, as a project. Right now, they're working on the heritage action plan and historical preservation. That's their, that's their big work piece right now. Um, but you know, it's up to council. Council sets that direction. So, Mr. President, I'd like to also respond to something Mona said. Um, that with the larger development projects, like in the five A district, the new the new actually the new construction actually improves the management of the stormwater. Right. I'm not referring. They, because not they, referring. yeah, I think it's when I think it's the issue that Fred was speaking to, which is actually we do need to improve, which is the smaller development, like the single family houses and the, you know, like in the residential districts that don't have as high a threshold for the management of stormwater. But I think it's often misunderstood in general by the public when we, when we talk about new development that it's important to realize that if you're gonna replace say surface parking lots with the buildings, like they're doing at Forest Avenue, there's much, much better management of the stormwater and much right. less flooding. Just as when they built, say, Fox Hall Lane, there was far less discharge of the surface water down into Nar Narberth Park because they were able to put a cistern under the circle, right. you know, on on Fox Hall Lane. And right. um, same thing with the the cul-de-sac on Grayling or Hampton. I think it's up where the mayor lives. Um, um, the same thing was true. So all those new developments were done with much more rigorous standards than some of the surface lots that are all over town and really do contribute to a tremendous amount of uh, runoff. Absolutely. I, thank you for clarifying that further, Bob. I'm not talking about developments in the 5A district. I'm talking about um, single family homes potentially, or even you know twins or something that don't have the same rigorous standards for stormwater. 
Mona, I like, I like what you're saying. And I know we've been discussing this also in infrastructure with Fred. Uh, just one thought is, I know the EAC has a lot on their agenda. So if we, if we did wanna make this a priority, we may also want to consider expanding the size of the EAC. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps, um, Rob, is there an opportunity for a sort of an ad hoc subcommittee of the EAC? Is that what, what you would do with that additional membership? Is that, I mean, that would be up to the, cha the chair of the EAC, but as a, as a structure, right, to, to move it along. Yeah, right. That could be done too. Okay. Okay. Um, Mona, do you want to reach out? Um, to the ESC, maybe get some more information and, and maybe at, at, in March, we can have further conversations about uh, where council goes with sort of direction setting. Sure. Okay. And then um, the any other new. And then in the future, maybe. The sorry, you broke. Sorry. My. Yes, right, right. I think what let's get some more information from EAC because I think they're very closely connected with it. And then we can say, okay, you know, they're going to handle piece X but we're still concerned about piece Y and here's what we think it, it shapes to look like and make it into a, a direction that could go ultimately to the planning commission for them to look at. Sure, thank you. Um, it could also be part of um, changes to the zoning code prospectively at a high level, which might uh, further decrease uh, the incentive for demolition in this highly, highly hot economic environment, you know, where every square foot really uh, equals a lot of money. Right. Thank you. Okay. And Any other more, new or old business? Um, one more question, and I didn't even think about it until I saw Iris profile picture. Uh, is there yeah. an update on parks and athletic schedules? And I say that because I saw Ira without NIDA and NETS. Um, actually, the mayor has been. Uh, working with some of the athletic associations because it, it sort of comes down to public safety in terms of COVID and uh, COVID restrictions. Go ahead, Mayor. Uh, that's okay. Um, I just recently received a uh, safety plan for the playing of ba uh, baseball in the fields. Uh, I'm reviewing that. Uh, I'm gonna be reviewing that with the emergency management team, make sure um, that can be done safely. Um, anything that's done has to be done safely. Uh, I've received requests on the basketball courts. Currently, uh, the plan is still to maintain what we have uh, in terms of uh, restrictions on the basketball courts as the CDC is, is uh, saying that that's uh, a, a very high, higher risky uh, act activity. Uh, so we're, uh, we're going to maintain those restrictions on the basketball courts, but we are constantly reviewing what can be done safely in light of CDC recommendations. Does that answer your question, Cindy? Yeah, th so did we, per thank you, Andrew. Yes, did we purchase the netting? That might be a question for Ed Harmon. Well, we approved it, um, and I know they were having some delays. Right, yeah. and then I think there was a new cost to it because it's been a year. I can answer that. They have been purchased and they are currently waiting to be installed, um, waiting for the weather to break. Great. Great. Actually, okay. not, not just purchased, but they've been manufactured and they're waiting in the, they're, they're in storage in the manufacturer's facility um, waiting for an installation date. That's great. Thanks, Matt. Any other new or old business? Hearing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Is there a second? Rob, all in favor? All right. Any opposed? The meeting is adjourned. Have a lovely evening. Hey, Aaron. Hey. Just a question about Sunday. Okay, a question for Matt.